Hi, my name's Jason Morton. I'm a marine scientist from Avondale University College, and I've been investigating rocky shores like this one at Bateau Bay on the central coast of New South Wales for over 20 years. Lots of people visit sandy beaches, but if you want to investigate marine species, there is no better place to do so than rocky shores. There are lots of creatures that live here. They are easy to find as they are either stuck to the rocks or move very slowly. All you need is sun protection, some sturdy shoes, a rocky shore with good protection from the waves, a low tide and a good field guide that will help you identify the things that you find. One of the main things evident on a rocky shore is zonation. That is, as you move from the higher to the lower parts of the shore, there are distinct bands or zones that contain species called indicator species. These indicator species are generally restricted to specific zones. On steep shores, these zones are often compressed into only a couple of metres, but on flat platforms, like this one at Bateau Bay, these zones can be spread out over many tens of metres. The supralittoral zone is the highest zone on the rocky shore. In this zone, it's above the highest of the tide, so it's often called the splash or the spray zone. Up here, it's home to very few hardy species, and those that are here are often very abundant. Indicator species in this zone are small snails called blue periwinkles, which have a smooth shell, and noddywinks, which have a bumpy shell. Both species feed on lichens and microscopic algae growing on the rock surfaces. As they receive only occasional wave splash, they must have various adaptations for survival in this hottest and driest of rocky shore environments. One of these adaptations is to be a light colour, which helps reflect sunlight and prevent them from heating up too much. The highest of the intertidal zones is the upper littoral zone. Here, the creatures spend a lot of time out of the water, so they either have to store water or retreat to crevices or pools. Indicator species in the upper littoral zone include honeycomb barnacles, rose barnacles, and striped mouth conniewinks. Moving down the shore, we next reach the mid-littoral zone. Here, we find high abundances of zebra periwinkles, black nerrets, oyster borers, and many species of limpets, including variegated limpets. We also find the first seaweeds, including Neptune's necklace and sea lettuce. The lowest level on the rocky shore is the lower littoral zone. In this zone, we move from an area that was dominated by animals in the mid and the upper to now an area that's dominated by seaweeds, including lacerated sargassum, coralline algae and sea velvet. Species found here do not tolerate drying out very well, so even during low tide, they may rely on waves regularly washing over them. Animals to be found here include sea squirts or kanjivoy, which are often indicator species of this zone, as well as purple urchins, gloomy octopuses, and predatory snails such as Spengler's tritons and cartrut shells. The lower littoral zone is the zone where you'll find most animals, but you do need a very low tide and a day when the waves are small. You also need to take great care and keep your eyes on the ocean as there is always the possibility of an unsuspecting wave washing through this lowest of intertidal zones. In this zone, you are likely to be rewarded with finding less common species such as nudibranchs, umbrella shells, bubble shells, sea hares, elephant snails, and keyhole limpets. As well as having preferences for certain zones, most rocky shore species also have microhabitat preferences. Microhabitats are smaller habitats found on the rocky shore. The main ones are flat rock surfaces, crevices, pools and cobbles. Flat rock surfaces are the most exposed of the microhabitats. They are exposed to intense sunlight, drying winds and the impact of waves. Many species require special adaptations to live here, including the ability to store water when the tide is out, tolerance to heating up and the ability to avoid being dislodged by waves. 
Creatures living on the flat rock surfaces, especially those higher on the shore, must wait for the incoming tide before resuming their daily activities, including feeding. Crevices provide a place to retreat when the tide is out. They are often shaded, they commonly hold water, and they're protected from the waves. Crevices may even be flush with water when the tide is out, allowing creatures that live here to continue feeding even during low tide. Species common in crevices include green anemones, sand anemones, orange tunicates, various crabs such as purple clawed shore crabs, and snails such as oyster borers. Pools provide an oasis for many rocky shore species that otherwise live lower on the shore. Common species to be found in pools include bell shells, gloomy octopuses, fishes, purple urchins, eight-armed sea stars, and many seaweeds. These seaweeds in turn provide homes for warreners, leaning limpets, small brittle stars, and amphipods. The seaweeds offer these creatures protection from drying out, from waves, and from predators which are looking to eat them. These predators include birds when the tide is out and fishes when the tide is in. Exploring beneath cobbles provides rewarding opportunities to find rarely seen rocky shore creatures. One reason is that waves don't impact beneath the cobbles, so sediment can accumulate underneath them, which provides a home to various species, including peanut worms and brittle stars that feed on organic matter within the sediment. So here we've got lots of fireworms, and we also have a flatworm down here. Also a keyhole limpet and various types of chitons. Other species living beneath the cobbles include crabs and shrimps, various chitons including the Australian black chiton, giant turban shells, elephant snails, sea hares, spirobid worms, five-armed sea stars and barnacles such as the tessellated barnacle and purple barnacle. Just remember when you're exploring the cobble area that you lift rocks very, very gently because lots of the creatures are very, very sensitive and also sensitive to sunlight. And so once you've done your exploring, it's important to very gently but quickly return the rocks to their original position. The cobbles are also a micro habitat where blue ringed octopuses are likely to be encountered as well as other creatures that can cause harm, including orange fireworms. You now know where to find creatures on the rocky shore. So what are you waiting for? It's time to go out and explore.